Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I am here today to show you how to make this awesome woven block. Recently I got to spend some time with a weaver like she had a really giant loom and was weaving things and it was so cool and I thought let's see if we can do a block with jelly roll strips that looks like a woven block. So let's take a look at this quilt behind me. You can see how these go together and you can see the weave and it's just kind of fun. There's a uh, seven blocks across, eight blocks down for 56 blocks. It makes a quilt that is 73 by 82, so a pretty good size quilt. So what you're gonna need to make this quilt is one roll of two and a half inch strips. And we have used Wild Nectar by Crystal Manning from Moda. And it's just a beautiful, happy line you can see in the colors behind me. You're gonna need a yard and a quarter of background. And this little white is the, is the Cornerstone is what we're calling our background. And you really do need that much. I was like, one and a quarter yards, you know, cause I just sew with what's on my desk, but we really did use that much. Then also on your sashing, the little gray sashing, these inch and a half strips, you're gonna need some of that. You're gonna need a uh, yard and a half of that. And that actually takes care of your inner border as well. Now the outer border is one and a quarter yards. And this is just a little five inch border. And so it's not too huge. And the backing, you're gonna need five yards of backing. And we have used this great butterfly print. The backing is such a fun place to use a nice big print. Um, really, really pretty. So let me straighten this back out there for you. There we go. Okay, so let me show you how to make this because this, uh, this is really fun. Now you're gonna take your two and a half inch strips and we're gonna have to cut some of those pieces. And we are gonna cut two and a half inch squares and four and a half inch rectangles. And you're actually gonna get six of those out of each block. So I've got my little, I'm gonna cut off my selvage edge here. And then this little ruler is just two and a half inches wide. So it makes it really easy to cut. Just lay it along the edge. And we are gonna cut, we're cutting two layers. Our strip is folded in half. We're gonna cut six of those. And then we're also gonna get six of the four and a half inch rectangles. And I'm actually just gonna fold my strip and see if I can do it this way. Actually, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it that way. I think I'm gonna lose one if I do it that way. All right, so we're gonna cut um, four and a half, one, two, three, four and a half right here. So there's two. Let's see, we got our half here at the front. One, two, three, four. I always count, it's better to be safe than sorry. There's four and one more here. And we've got one, two, three, four and a half. Now you're actually gonna wanna pair these up. So we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep a, uh, a long strip with a square, one square like this, because this is gonna make a quarter of our block. This is the block we're going for right here and we're making a quarter of a block at, the at a time. And so you wanna keep these, you know, these strips together uh, and you'll wanna do that to all your strips. Just make sure they're in little pairs so you have, a, you have a two and a half and a four and a half and you know that's gonna be one quarter of a block. All right, so this is also a block you wanna lay out because this corner block has to line up with this corner block. So you gotta know what's coming ahead and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay some of these out and I'll use one of these. So you get, you, you're gonna put a long square, a long strip, I mean, with, uh, with your two squares. And this is gonna be a different one like this. Now we're gonna look over this way and this, whatever this color was, we're gonna put that one over here. And then we're gonna start a new block over here. We're gonna look ahead this one's gonna go over here. So you have to make sure they have this continuity and this little strip's gonna go here. And then the, the long strip, wait, this is gonna go down here. And I really did have to really lay these out to make sure that I had them right. And then a little white, a little white strip goes in each corner like this. I mean a little white square. Little white square. And I chose white just because it made that fabric pop. Obviously you can use whatever color you want. So now you're gonna sew these quadrants together like this. So basically every single two and a half inch square gets sewn to a two and a half inch square. And so we're just gonna do that. 
quarter of an inch right down the side. And I'm actually going to stack up mine and uh, take them all over to the sewing machine and just hope I can get them back in the right place. <laughs> actually, I know I can, but it's one of those things where it's always like, <gasps> you know, so, all right, here we go. I'm just going to chain piece these, so we're just going to shoot them through one after the other. It doesn't matter if your color or your white is on top. It just matters that they are wrong side or right sides together. I almost said that wrong. Almost led you astray right there. All right, now let's clip these apart and we'll press these open. And make sure my iron's nice and warm. There we go. And the last one here. And I am pressing, so uh, I am pressing with my dark color on the top. So when I fold it back, that seam, your little seam stays hidden on the dark side. All right, so now I'm gonna look at these where my, um, where my fabric came across. All right, there we go. So now we can sew our pieces together. And on your pieces, they're always gonna go uh, your long rectangle on top with the color to the top. So let's go ahead and we're gonna take a big risk, fold all these up and hope I can get them right back where they go. So I've got my bar on the top of my two, two patch and my, my long rectangle is on top of the two patch with the color at the top. So it's kind of important that you do that the same. Otherwise, you'll be doing a little bit of ripping, which is fine too if it happens. You know, people die over ripping out stuff and I'm like, I do it all the time. But the reason I make a mistake isn't usually because I sew bad. It's usually because I'm just not paying attention. You know, I'm so, uh, I get squirreled really easily and something's going on and I'm just not, I'm just not watching what I'm doing. Took off a little too fast on that one. And then I get, I get lost, you know. I, I start doing things by rote rather than like really thinking about where I'm going with things. And some patterns, it's true, you have to pay a little more attention than others. And this is one of those, you want it to match up and you want it to all work. All right, now. We're clipping these apart and we're gonna press them open. Again, I'm gonna leave my long uh, rectangle on the top and press, so set it and roll it back. And set and roll. And set and roll. Set and roll. All right, now we put these together as a four patch. So let's see, again, I'm gonna see if I can, all right, I know this guy has to go across from him, but not quite like that, like this. There we go. Whew. All right, this one's gonna go here. Nope, wait, wait for it. The, oh, here's a clue. I've got a clue for you. Your white squares always have to be in the corners. So that's a clue right there. And so this one's not gonna be able to go there. So let's, uh, let's watch what we got here. White squares in the outside corners. <laughs> I'm losing my mind here. Oh, here we go. There we go, there we go. Whew. White square in the outside corner. Oh, I think I may have it. There we go. Look at that. So you can see how this looks like it's weaving through and then we're just gonna sew them together as a four patch. So I do get a little angly challenge, but these little clues help me. So the white square in the outside corner. So let's go ahead and put this together now. And you don't wanna leave it too long. If it moves places, you're in big trouble. All right, I'm just gonna reach, grab this one over here. Thank heaven for those long arms. And honest, there's no seams to match up on this either, so. This should totally work. And then we're just gonna put these together and make sure our white corners are on the outsides. Now this one, you wanna match up that center seam. You're gonna sew along. Then you wanna make sure that this center seam is laying nice. And you're gonna come across to there. All right, now for the big reveal. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> it worked. 
You just never know. You just never know. I do my best, you guys. I do my best. All right. So now this is your block. This is your little woven block. And we want them to put, a, put them together in a quilt. And when I started putting them all together originally, I thought, I just want to put these together and have them uh, just kind of interweave. But they actually don't because the colors are different. So I decided to accentuate the block and put them together uh, with a sashing. So now we've got whatever size your block ends up. Looks like ours is eight and a half. Should be about eight and a half. What you're gonna do is you are going to lay, and your strips is gonna be that long. So you're gonna lay a sashing in between every row. All right, so here's a block and a sashing, a block and a sashing, and you're gonna have seven across the top and eight down. So here is, here's another one over here. You're just going to keep sewing those together like that. Now your sashing row, the next row is you're going to is it's going to be a row of sashing, and it's going to be a piece like this. And we've added a cornerstone. So if your sashing strip, which ours is one and a half, then you want to make your cornerstone one and a half, and then you're able to set that up right as you go along, just like this. And so it'll just fit really nice in there. And then you're going to add your next row of blocks to that. So a sashing row goes in between every row and your rows are all sashed first. So again, sash your rows, make a sashing strip, sash your rows, and then you're gonna sew those two together and it just goes together really quickly and easy. The benefit of the cornerstone is that it helps keep your blocks all lined up. I have a real problem with squaring things up with no stone in there. They get a little off, drives me a little crazy. This will solve that problem. So this is a fun quilt to make. Um, it's a nice big one. Love the woven block. I loved my time, spending my time with that gal with on her weaving machine. That was such a cool thing. And most things like that inspire me to want to come home and make something um, that has to do with what I've just learned or how I felt. That's, the, that's my creative process. So we're calling this the Dream Weaver Quilt. You can sing that song all afternoon. And we hope you enjoyed this tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.